Hi everybody, Carissa here with Inky Fairy Designs and I'm really excited about this video today. I'm kicking off a new watercoloring series with the Greeting Farm using their Fru Fru collection. Today I'm using Fru Fru Sweet and I'll be watercoloring her with Koi watercolors. I have the Pocket Field sketch collection. I'm using Tim Holtz watercolor paper. This is the watercolors that I'm using. A nice well-loved palette here and I uh, just want to show you you need to have some clean water when you're getting ready to watercolor and a variety of brushes. I have uh, different sizes. I like to use the bigger brushes for my backgrounds and the smaller for the images. And then you want to also have some waterproof ink. I'm using uh, Sukuneko Versa Versafine Onyx Black. Uh, it's just my preference of uh, ink for my watercoloring. I love the, the black crisp images that it gives me and it stamps well on uh, watercolor paper. So the technique that I'm using today is, uh, I call it a wet on wet technique. Um, basically what I'm doing is I'm wetting my paper before I am bringing in any of the color from my palette. So you can see that I'm using um, a clean brush when I first lay down my water here. And then I will go in and I'll pick up some of the blue from my palette and I will put that where I just laid down the water and you'll see that it starts to blend out and it just it makes a really easy way to get backgrounds. Um, so that's what I use most often when I am watercoloring backgrounds. I like that I can add uh, different colors. So here I'm coming in with a darker blue just to give some more interest and texture to that sky behind her. And it will blend in with the blue that I already have laid down. So the brush that I'm using here is a number eight and um, I'm doing the same thing here with the grass beneath her. And I just laid down some clean water and then I brought in uh, one light color green and then I blended it out with a darker green. And I'll also bring in um, some browns to add some more shading underneath her. Now in the end I end up not using all of the image for my card but I never know when I'm starting so I have a nice background in case I do want to use it. So now I'm using a smaller brush to go into the image itself. I think I'm using a number two and um, for the skin there's a peach color in this um, koi watercolor set that I have and uh, instead of kind of blending a or creating a palette um, in, the color, in the palette that it has um, Basically, you can mix your own color there is what I'm trying to say. And instead of doing that, I'm doing all of my blending on the image itself. Um, because I'm using that kind of wet technique, I can lay down color and it's going to blend out. And then I can lay down a shadow. And uh, it, it's just easier for me to do it this way when I'm working with the Koi watercolors. Now, if I'm working with a different color, different watercolor, I might do it differently. Um, but for this, I, that's, that's the way that I'm doing it. And I can let it dry. And so you can see here the image had dried a little bit and I wanted to intensify her cheeks. So I just brought in some more of that pink, dark pink color and blended it out with some water. And so her cheeks are brighter now. So now I'm going to come in and I'm going to start with her dress. And I'm doing the same thing where I laid down some uh, clean water and then I brought in the yellow that I wanted to use and I just blended it out. One of the things that I love about watercoloring is you don't have to do a whole lot of blending or shading with more than one color because you can really create the lights and shadows with the amount of color and the amount of water that you're using. And um, also you'll see that I use a paper towel sometimes if I'm not getting 
um, it light enough or if I add it too much color where I want it to be brighter, I will take my paper towel and I will lift some of that color up. So here I am coming in with some purple to add some shading underneath uh, where I think the cast shadows would be. And now on her skin I'm adding some blue uh, to add some more depth and shading to her face. And it's kind of the same concept as with any other medium. You can add that cool shadow to your image and then go over top of it with your peachy color and it'll just give you some more interest and add some depth to your coloring. So I really use the same concepts in no matter what medium I'm working in. You can always kind of adapt that to um, the mediums that you are working with and just play around and see what works and see what doesn't work and have fun with it. So I am coloring these little ribbons or ruffles on her dress and I'm doing kind of a rainbow. And one thing I wanted to point out with this part of the image is that when you are watercoloring, you want to make sure that you when you move on to another section of the image, you want the the other part to be dry. So that's why you see here I'm skipping in between the um, the ruffles is because I wanted that red to be dry before I moved into the orange because if it wasn't I could have there's a potential for kind of the waters just or the colors just blending together because the water will still be wet and it'll still just blend into it. So I skipped the orange and went on to the yellow and then I went on to the blue by skipping the green area that I knew I wanted to color. And I let those areas dry and then I was able to come in and add those other colors. So <clears throat> that's when you'll see me jump around to different areas of the image. It's because I don't want to work next to an area that I was just working in that's still wet. One thing that you can do is you can always use your heat gun and dry that if you don't want to wait for an area to dry and you want to move on. That's something that you can definitely do. So going in with the hearts and I'm just adding a different shade of red there and I think I'm going to do the candy here. And so doing the same thing, and so you see I was doing the heart, but I didn't want to do the other pieces next to that. So I left those and moved on to the ribbon and her hair. And now I am doing the ruffle or the lace on her dress. And I went in with a black just to add kind of a shadow um, because I really wanted it to be kind of white but with anything that you're coloring white you do need to add some type of shadow to give it some dimension and to blend that out more I used my Wink of Stella clear and now that the heart is dry I can go back and color the rest of the candy in her arms and I'm coming in I believe with these smaller areas I'm using a probably number one or number zero brush so that's why I have a lot of different brushes um, because depending on what the area size is, um, it's going to depend on what, what size brush I'm going to use. So I'm adding, I'm going to finally color her hair here and I'm using kind of like a reddish brown and I'm letting that blend in and then um, while it's still wet, I will come back in with a darker brown and that will just give some more shading and some more dimension to her hair. But really with watercoloring I just love to see the colors blend on their own. I don't do a whole lot of um, I don't do a whole lot of like here's where the cast shadow would be or you know this is where my light source is. I really do let the water dictates where the color is going to end up and it's a different it's a different way of thinking for coloring and it's a way to really just let go and have some fun 
And so here I am, I'm using a really small, this is probably the zero that I'm using here on her eyes. And I'm just adding some blue. And then that pretty much completes the image. I do off camera add um, like a pupil with a Copic multi-liner pen and then um, some white, a, a white gel pen to add some highlights to her eyes. But that's it. I do hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope you'll be back to see more of my watercoloring series with the Greening Farm and the Fru collection. So here are some close-ups of the card I completed with this image. You can see the detail that I added on her eyes and I also used glossy accents on the candy. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please if, give me a thumbs up if you did and follow my channel so that you can catch the rest of this series. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.